What's up guys? It's Ashley. Thank you for tuning into my channel. So I have currently been in the boutique business for about eight and a half, nine years now. I started out online and now I do own a boutique called Strap Boutique here in Watertown, New York, and we've been open two and a half years. And so I thought I would just make a video. I'm going to make a bunch of little videos because I wish I had, you know, some help when I was starting out. Um, so we'll start out this one with how I got into it and all that good stuff. And then, um, we'll break it down into which, um, websites I use, which brands I like the best. So yeah, hopefully it is helpful to you guys. So, um, I started out in Apex, North Carolina with my online boutique and online is great and it's easier somewhat as far as cost wise. Like for me to start my online business, it really just cost me about ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, but it's a lot harder business. There's so many online boutiques nowadays that it is really hard to uh, keep up. And you know, some of these other businesses have hundreds of thousands of dollars to be doing all their marketing where I did not have that. And then moving here back to New York um, and starting my business, it cost me around 40 grand to start an actual boutique from inventory to uh, you know fixing up the store to turning on my electricity to you know having to pay all those extra bills internet all that all the other non fun things so um, there's a lot of things you do need to take into consideration I do like having an actual store better just because you get foot traffic too I still probably half of my business still is online so that is nice um but when starting out i did um go to jcc which is the community college here and i wanted to talk to them about what i could do as far as you know funding and all that stuff i did not end up getting any funding thankfully i had sold my house very quickly in north carolina so i had cash that i could use to start up but there are options for you for small businesses especially if you're a woman um, there's micro loans. There are different things that you can take advantage of. Um, and here, there's a lot of places that will like pay half your rent and stuff like that. I personally was not able to do that. Um, but I did find a place that um, the rent wasn't super crazy. In North Carolina, you could not find a place for under like $1,200 a month for rent. So that being said, I did look down there, but it would have been a lot more. It probably would have cost me 50 to start up there at least just because it is more expensive but again down there you can get away with selling stuff for a little higher price here I starting out I had to you know I checked out kind of what the incomes were around here this is a military town but it is also a um a little how do I want to say it <laughs> Um, there aren't a lot of great paying jobs around here, so it is really hard. So I did have to take that into consideration. When buying merchandise, I don't buy from all the same designers anymore just because I know somebody's not going to pay $100 for a t-shirt. So um, when I first moved back here, I did start looking around for different spots. I looked all the way up Arsenal Street, which is like by the mall and things. But again, those are a little more expensive. Uh... And then I started looking at the downtown area, which is called um, the square here. And I did find some really cute spots there. Um, a little pricey, some of them, not so much as far as like square footage, what you get for it. And then I actually got lucky and right next to a spot that I frequent, there happened to be like a month after, uh, yeah, I think it was a month after I had my child came available and it was like a calling for me. So I went and looked at it, fell in love with it and I ended up getting that. So we've been there for two and a half years and it's perfect. So um, obviously you have to think about when you're starting up, you're gonna have to pay first and last month's rent. You wanna look and see if there's good parking. You wanna make sure that there's good visibility. There were a few other spots I looked at, but they didn't have storefronts. You know, like I would have been in a building, but not had not good signage. Um, so, you know, when you start up, you gotta, get your signage done, you gotta get business cards done, you gotta get the permit to put the sign up, you gotta get paint, you gotta get the fixtures, you know, for all of the um, different things that, for your clothing racks, your mannequins, your clothes, your dressing rooms, your uh, computers. For your inventory, you have to choose which 
you're going to, I'm getting a bunch of Snapchats right now, sorry, that's why I'm getting off. My phone's going bing, 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 bing. Um, you have to choose what you're going to use as far as your computer system. There are a lot of great re retail um, online things you wanna use. I've tried like three or four, and I am using Square right now, which I love Square because it is great because it, I do my inventory in store, but also online. Before I had them separate and it was a lot of work. I was doing twice the amount of work and it can add up, especially when you're you know, selling a ton in store, you're busy, you don't have the time to go and put all that stuff, take it all out of your online inventory. So you do wanna take that into consideration. Plus, um, you do wanna check out interest rates for credit card fees. People don't realize all the fees and things that we have to pay when we're doing our clothing, which I'm gonna get into price points and how to mark up your clothes when you're doing them wholesale, all that in a separate video. But um, just to turn on my electricity here, it cost me $580 just to get the electricity turned on. Now, those little things you do need to take into consideration. I have been looking at opening up a second store. I've went to Sackets Harbor, I've went to other places, but again, you have to think of how much your water bill is gonna be. Um, a lot of the other places that are kind of busy around here do not have a lot of foot traffic in this in the winter time in the summer It's great, but only like four months out of the year So then you have to make up for the other months out of the year, which can be expensive. So always think location location Honestly when you're getting a place to you can negotiate everything is negotiable um, So make sure that you a lot of places offer upfit money too, which the place that I rented did not, so I did have to pay everything out of pocket, but I know that some other businesses always ask about that, which if you're going through a realtor or whatever, they'll know all the right questions to ask depending where you are located. Um, so yeah, take into consideration your water bill, your electricity, your internet, your rent, um, and obviously a monthly budget for, or, yeah, a monthly budget for a new inventory. I order new inventory every three weeks, just because it keeps the cycle going, I found that. And uh, when we get into inventory, you'll see that a lot of things are on um, back order. So you have to look at the back order date and they don't always come on time. So sometimes, no matter what, you get screwed. So you can't always depend on that. Again, we'll get into all of that in a separate video, but um, there, it, it has been great for me. A lot of people have opened them and they don't succeed. You have to be, great at marketing, not just your business, but yourself. You gotta be able to laugh at yourself, put yourself out there. I do have brand reps and models that do things for me, but they're not available every single day. And also you have to take in consideration that adds money. You, um, I did start out in the very beginning, I went balls to the wall as far as marketing. I did TV, I did radio, I did magazines, I paid for Facebook and Instagram posts. I was literally, um, spending every dime that I was making and I found out through all this what works and what doesn't as far as local TV nobody really watches TV we're either DVRing or we got our apps or we are watching Netflix or Hulu or any of that I will say this though if you do have Time Warner they will allow you to um, choose certain channels like for instance since I'm a boutique I would say I would use Bravo or E those are really the only two that I would personally go with TV really did not do much for my business and it is very expensive. Um, you can make your own commercials though and just get with a videographer and do those online. Those I have gotten great. That's worth the money spending. Um, also fashion shows, you, those help. Um, also charities, doing fashion shows for other people, you know, so a lot of things to take into consideration. It is very fulfilling. I say I get to play dress up every single day, so that is very nice and I enjoy that. I even bring my son to work with me a lot of the time, so that has been awesome. Um, so there are some ups and downs. A lot of times, you know, January through April is a slower time of the year, but that also lets me, you know, regroup, get my uh, ducks in a row as far as prom's coming up, summer stuff's coming up. I have sales that time of year. You'll definitely learn the different, um, you'll see the flow of how things go. Um, which is why I like Square also because it tells me it keeps track of all of that for me. Yes. yes. So that is very beneficial. Um, and at the end of the at the end of the month it tells you how you did, how many customers, the average sale, the most sold items, and all that good stuff. And then at the end of the year, I just got my end of the year from um, Square also. So yes, um, 
I'm trying to think of everything I wanted to cover. Oh yeah, radio, if you have a good local radio, radio is good too. There are, um, you know, people are in their car, and yes, a lot of people listen to Amazon or to Pandora and stuff, but when you're just on a quick ride, you usually have your local radio on, and even if they're not listening to that, they will be sharing it on their social media or whatever else for you, or if they have um, good, like we do the Dollar Saver with Tunes, and I do um, North Country Saves with the Border, which are two local ones. They help because they're little gift cards and people save money. I try to do those during the slower times of the year. So there are different ways that you can market yourself without spending a ton of money. Now, you can't be one of those people, if you are in the boutique business, you know, you wanna be able to, you gotta find out, okay, Am I going to sell to mostly teenagers, older women, middle age? You know, I kind of sell to all. So, and I have sizes from small to 3X. I was carrying extra small. A lot of times when I was getting them, they weren't selling. So now I just do small to 3X. And again, it's nice because then people of all ages, all sizes can shop with me. In the beginning, I did not do that, but I had a lot of people request it. So you kind of start out and you feel out your business. Now I do have a few customers that will spend a little extra on things. I try to keep my t-shirts between $20 and $30. My sweaters will be more around $30, $40, and my dresses are around $30, $40. I personally do not have anything above $50 besides formal wear. I did start carrying formal wear just because we are obviously prom, and then um, we are in a military town, so there are a lot of military balls. So again, just feel that out. When I had a bunch of people asking me about that stuff, that's when I started carrying it. Now, um, what else? Trying to think you'll figure you'll feel out like the different times of the year obviously um there's end of year sales there's uh end of summer sales there's back to school sales there's you know you want to run really good specials right before the holidays because you know people are shopping but are trying to save money so again you'll just want to feel that out and every area is different i will say this um when i was first starting out and i was taking marketing classes and talking to professionals about that, they always said, if you're a boutique, you don't want to downscale yourself by having a sale rack. I totally don't believe that. I always have a sale rack, and usually my items are around 20. Yes, this is my son, Halen. And usually those items are around $20. Now, you'll see once we get to the video about buying wholesale, the prices that we do actually spend on our items. Now, just to put a little side note in there, once we're buying them, we don't have to pay, pay sales tax on them when we're buying them, but we do have to pay for shipping. So if it's a big order, shipping can be $100 sometimes. So we have to add that into the price. We have to add tax into the price. We also have to figure in if we have <laughs> discounts or, you know, once we mark things down or if we have gift cards out there. And also our, how much, if you pay with a credit card, how much that is gonna take out. So those little things do definitely add up. You know, there's always the family discount too. A lot of people will tell you, um, you are just being so silly. He's going ring around the rosy around my little camera. Um, so there are a lot of things to take into consideration. Again, I will tell you some of my favorite brands. We'll go over the best websites to use if you're starting out. Um, and quality and pricing and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, um, if you are obviously starting out, you want to be on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube page. YouTube is huge. So there's some little pointers for you. We will be back. I'm around 13, around 14 minutes right now. I'm going to try to do a lot more informational videos for you guys. If you do have any questions, you can email me at, um, A-S-H-L-E-I-G-H-198-2003 at Yahoo. Um, and I can answer any of your questions. I am open to help. I have, since I've opened, had some of my customers actually open their own boutiques online and stuff. Again, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just all in uh, what you're selling. People gotta love it. And you gotta be able to pertain to everyone. You know, not everybody loves lace. Not everybody loves floral. Not everybody loves really body contouring stuff. Not everybody likes really flowy stuff, you know? So um, not everybody likes leggings. You gotta kind of be able to feel out your customers and get some feedback. Don't be afraid to put out a, um, a little poll or something like that. Don't be afraid to make silly videos. 
people are nosy. They're sitting on their phones a lot. If I make a funny video and it gets a thousand views, hey, I don't care. <laughs> they can look at me and laugh, but guess what? You're still watching it. So we'll get to marketing points too. Like I said, I'm going to do a ton of more videos. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to be sharing this stuff with you. I've been asked a bunch of times and things are going good for me. I don't mind sharing the wealth, I guess you could say, <laughs> or sharing my experience. There we go. I don't mind sharing those pointers. There are a lot of things that I wish I knew in the beginning. Um, so yeah, I'm making sure that I covered all my bases. Yeah. So starting off, trying to find your, the right spot, make yourself Thank you, baby. Make a storyboard. Make what you want your boutique to look like. I went for a rustic decor. So, like, my desk is made out of, out of pallets. My dressing room is made out of pallets. Um, my jewelry stand is actually old stairs. So, kind of think of the look you're going for. Think of the price point you're going for. Think of if you're going for casual. Think of if you're going for more formal. If you're going mixture. If you're going to do kids to adults. I just do women's clothing. You could put in baby clothing, which I would like to add eventually. A men's clothing. Everybody always asks for me or uh, asks for that from me because there's not a lot of shopping options around here. You could do a dog boutique. I mean, there's so many options nowadays. The mommy and me. Next, starting this summer, I'm gonna have more mommy and me matching outfits. So there are so many different options for you out there. Definitely do your research. Definitely know your community. Definitely know what they can afford. You don't want to have things overpriced and you don't want to have them underpriced. You don't want to lose money. Always think of that. Shh. You're a crazy man, Halen. Be good. Um, also, take into consideration. So, yeah, startup costs, location, customers, marketing. There's so much to consider. So don't just jump into it. Again, if you're online, it's obviously a lot cheaper and everything, but it's harder. I mean, you have your close family and you can market yourself on the internet, but there's a ton of those out there. You want to stand out from the rest. So think of what your little niche, could, niche, niche, your niche could be, whatever. So yeah, um, and I am just getting involved in doing radio um with watertown live so there's another outlet i'm always thinking of outlets you want to promote other local businesses it's always about working together especially when you're in a smaller community you want to help each other out it's a ref my i will never forget this it's always word of mouth is the biggest advertising so you know make sure when your customers come in that you tell them to make sure they go rate you online you know whether it's facebook or yelp or one of those so um, word of mouth is the best. Obviously, if they have a great experience with you, it's going to be awesome. I even added an extra little thing. You know, I do styling. Say somebody comes in and, you know, they may not love everything I have, but they have some pieces at home and they're going on vacation. I do offer styling service so I can come and take things in their closet and style them up. So that's an extra service I offer. Also, obviously, I do styling in store. Um, so... Think of what you can do to stand out from the other businesses in your, if there are other boutiques. A lot around here are thrift stores, so I don't think there's any actual other boutiques besides chain stores or whatever. So that makes me different. People like the more personal interaction. I have people come in, they think they're a size that they are, but they're not. They're either dressing themselves too big and look lumpy, like they just are not um, taking advantage of their shape. So you need to know your body, you need to let somebody else from the outside looking in, or you just are picking the same things because you're by yourself in your closet, you pick the same clothes every week or every few weeks. So you gotta kinda get out of that, that mindset too. So if you have, you know, a good eye for style, that is very helpful. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We're almost here at 20 minutes. My name is Ashley, I am the owner of Strut Boutique right here in Watertown, New York. Check out our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also our website. You can shop in-store or online. Um, we will be back in a f next week. I'm gonna try to do one a week with more videos. So we will be talking where you can shop, which wholesalers to use. I'm also gonna tell you some of my favorite brands and I'll be showing you some in my actual store. So everybody have an amazing week.